Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and what we're doing today is the Should You Buy video for the new Anvil Ballista, which was a surprise drop from CIG in the way that this is actually a in-game ready-to-go vehicle. Now, I say it's a vehicle because this is a ground-based vehicle, uh, similar in that it's kind of like the Cyclone AA, except at a very much larger scale. Uh, it is a air defense objective type of vehicle. Uh, once you have as a series of missiles on the back, it's kind of like a mobile SAM platform. Uh, Cost-wise, we're looking at $120 Warbond, $140 cash, or I'm sorry, uh, credit. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Warbond is, that means that you're actually spending new money into the game. Now, there are two new skins that you can actually get for this new vehicle, um, but they come in packages. So you're basically deciding that you're going to buy a snowblind version or a dune stalker version which is essentially a winter or a desert variant uh, meaning that you're going to be paying 125 for one of those instead a uh, size wise we're looking at 16 meters wide seven meters tall five meters wide so a relatively big vehicle um, and we have a crew of two uh, as far as the components this thing has on board, we're looking at um, vehicle components overall, though it does have two radars, two shield generators on it, so you're kind of getting a bolstered up vehicle compared to some of the others that we've seen in the game. Uh, it does not carry cargo, <clears throat> and you have a speed estimated at 33 meters per second. If you want to compare that to something you're familiar with that's already in the game, uh, you can look at the Cyclone, which is about 43 meters per second to 50 meters, depending on which model you're looking at. Uh, the weaponry here is what makes it interesting. Um, you have two size 2 Gatlings on the remote turret. Uh, based on the images, they kind of look like scorpions to me. Um, really designed to be focused in on close and personal combat. Um, so basically, if ships are able to evade your missiles and get a little bit closer to you, you have a turret that can rotate 360 degrees. Uh, you also have eight size 5 missiles, which are significantly large. You also have two size 7 missiles, which are very large. Uh, and the, what they're saying is, from the, at least from the leaked article that we saw, um, the size 5 missiles are really designed to kill everything up to a Cutlass in one hit, with the size 7 being better for ships like the Valkyrie or the Freelancer. Um, there's a couple things there. One, you need to really have the ability to choose which munition you have firing or you're going to have queued up to go next. Uh, so you're not wasting a larger uh, missile than you need to or you know, you're not shooting something that's going to not do the job. Um, you also, we probably need to see what the impact of shields are going to have. Is the size 5 really going to kill a cutlass if it's got full shields? Probably not. So we need some balancing type of discussion to really understand what this all means. Uh, as far as the range of your missiles, it's supposed to be over 2,000 meters, which is pretty good. Uh, it's not great, though, because, you, I mean, as you all know, I mean, distance is pretty vast in this game that we're playing. Um, you do have a small EM signature, which is great, meaning you can stay relatively hidden. If you're not firing your weapons or you're turning off certain systems, your heat signature should be pretty low, too. Uh, meaning that you may be able to lock and fire before they know you're even there. Now, as far as the design of this vehicle, it's very reminiscent of current and kind of older generation ICBM launchers. Um, the vehicle overall looks fairly well armored. Um, there may be some facilities interior based on some of the, the pictures that we've seen. Um, although it's hard to tell what's really like component storage. Um, some things look like they could be a potentially internal gun rack or something like that for FPS weapons. Hard to really say, but hopefully the Q&A article is going to shine a little light onto that. Uh, there are two seats. There's a driver and a gunner. Um, so essentially you have one person that's sitting up in the cockpit, one person that's towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, basically everything's all enclosed on the interior. So if you want to go between the two, you should be safe from fire, though you're obviously losing some functionality on the vehicle. Uh, the visibility from the cockpit seems pretty fantastic. There's a large uh, window um, that's on the kind of upper side of the ship or the vehicle, uh, which should make visually scanning the skies a pretty easy thing to do. Although I think based on how we've seen the game go today, you're much more likely to be staring at the radar. Or if you're in the driver's seat, you also are the one that could potentially control the remote turret as opposed to the actual um, missile turret. So I don't know how much play that window is actually going to have, but it looks pretty nice. Uh, if we talk about the uh, leaked article that came out, or the one that was supposedly uh, released a little bit too early, um, you do have to stop moving uh, this vehicle to be able to fire your missiles, um, which is going to be tied to the fact that as far as gameplay is concerned, you're going to have to lock down with some clamps to the surface of the planet or moon that you're on to be able to actually fire your missiles, because eventually you're going to have some pretty significant recoil that's coming from launching these larger missiles that will be visual. Uh, it also means that you're going to want to be working in tandem with the person that's in the back. 
Um, theoretically, you could drive this as a one-man vehicle, um, being able to just you know drive, park, get up, get out of the driver's seat, go to the back, get in the missile launcher, and fire. So it's an option that you technically have available, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be as effective as you could be otherwise. Um, also, design-wise, you have eight wheels, so there's no tracks here. You've got four wheels on either side. And if you want to get into this vehicle, you have an entry on the port side. Um, I do have some questions here, like can this thing actually target ground targets? You know, would you be able to shoot a tank, for example? Would you be able to target a cyclone and launch a missile at it? I don't know. Would it be overkill? Probably. Um, you know, I think another question comes up that, you know, we know that you can dodge missiles. You also have countermeasures. You know, are countermeasures as effective when you're in atmosphere? Um, how well can a lot of these ships actually maneuver to dodge when you're in atmosphere? Um, you know, different ships have different abilities to do that. So I think there's a lot of factors here that come in to decide, you know, how valuable will this thing end up being? Um, as far as a real should you buy here, I think it's hard to say at this point. Um, I think the jury's still out on basically everything that's ground vehicle related. Um, you know, I don't know how terrain is going to play with this vehicle. I don't know how line, line of sight is going to be impacted by things like trees and hills and things. Uh, is a, is a uh, spaceship that can come in at, you know, 500 meters per second, something you're really going to be able to target if they're able to stay close to the horizon? I don't know. There's a lot there that we need to see. So, I mean, more than a lot of these, I typically say wait for the Q&A before we make a real buying decision. Um, for right now, I think it's an expensive price to pay for something that I still feel is pretty niche, although I think we're seeing them be a little bit more... Um, putting a little bit more focus on ground play. So I think there's a potential for this to be a really versatile or I guess important type of vehicle to have in the game. But right now I don't see the value, especially if you're looking to use it on day one. Um, but again, let's wait for the Q&A and we'll see what comes out of that. So um, that's it for now. If you guys have questions on this, please let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for more coming soon and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.